Hey everyone, this is the Halifax Real Estate Podcast. My name is Jason Paul and I'm a licensed realtor at Keller Williams Select Realty in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm here to help you gain a better understanding of real estate in Halifax and introduce you to a wide variety of people that work in or with our industry as well. A carpenter and influencer by trade, an entrepreneur at heart, and a mother of two. Danica Coakley is a woman of many talents. After running her own custom furniture building business, DC Woodworks, for five years, Danica has bet the farm and moved into real estate investing and purchased her first flip in April 2020. After successfully selling it for a five-figure profit, Danica has now moved on to her second flip. You can see her story unfold on her Instagram and YouTube accounts, DC Woodworks. Please welcome Danica Coakley. Hey, Danica, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. I will tell you a little personal story before we get going is that when I was doing, um, when I was thinking of the topic of flipping, um, and I, I was thinking out loud at my apartment and my fiance, when I was like, I need someone for flipping, I don't have someone for flipping. My fiance just screamed, DC Woodworks. That's awesome. I'm sad she's <laughs> you, not here. You need this girl. You need to have her on. And then she, I think she DM'd me like eight pieces of your content on Instagram. That's awesome. And was like, she's your flipper. You have to have her on. If you don't, I'll punch you. And I was like, okay, well, domestic, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I don't want to take a beating. I'll contact her. Uh, but that's just like, so you like, this house is a fan of you. I've watched your content as well. That's awesome. Thank I you. love, I love what you're doing in terms of like how you're explaining how your process and stuff. I guess, I guess that for the audience will go is what do you do Danica? <laughs> <laughs> so I am a carpenter by trade yep. and I started out doing renovations with a company right out of school and then quickly turned my love of design and carpentry into a furniture business, which was very successful five years. Um, I just finished it last year and sort of said no to any more orders um, because I really wanted to get into house flipping and COVID sort of, was that, did you hear my belly? (laughs) (laughs) COVID sort of uh, forced me into it. I think a bit quicker than I would have anticipated. I wanted to like be ready and, you know, save up and sort of, have this cushion, but COVID was like, okay, you're not allowed to do orders. You're not allowed to go to Kent or you're not allowed to go to East coast, especially hardwoods and get all your supplies. No one cares about having a pretty coffee table when they're just trying to keep their lights on during COVID because everybody's out of work. So my orders were just like at a complete halt anyway. Okay. So I was like, okay, now is the time. It so happened to be at the exact month before my first mortgage that I'm in now that's my personal home was coming up on refinancing. Okay. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to close my eyes and jump and just hope it works. (laughs) (laughs) And it worked. It worked. (laughs) It worked. It worked out. Yeah. So I'm on to flip number two. Okay. Um, I learned a lot during flip number one and, uh, I was, extremely broke the entire time because you have (laughs) no idea what you're getting into. Of course. This time around, I feel like I'm going to be about 80% broke. Next time, probably about 60. Yeah. People see, I think my biggest thing is people see like, okay, you bought it for 230, you sold for 335. There's $135,000 you made. No. 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 (laughs) Absolutely not. There's so much more that goes into it (laughs) that you no, like the HGTV doesn't talk about that. Like of course. how hard it is, like financially, how to balance, how to put just enough into the home that it's beautiful, clean, safe and dry, but not like over above the neighborhood, like what the, the, it can hold in the value. Like I want to put waterfall courts everywhere. Not every neighborhood can have that. Like, yeah. $600 sinks. Not every neighborhood can hold that. So <laughs> it's been a learning curve for sure. Yeah, of course. Okay, you've unleashed so much stuff in there. Well, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back a little bit. All right, so I went on a tangent. You, car, carpenter. Carpenter. So, what got you into carpentry? Um, so my grandfather is a carpenter, and well, not by trade. He's sort of like a DIY. Learned everything. Oh, nice. Himself in like the woods in Newfoundland. The woods. Okay. Literally, like the town. Ta- well, the town I'm my family's from is about 900 people, and that's. My mom says that's in August when everybody's home to visit. (laughs) So he's very like he 
cannot get house insurance on his home because it is so rigged up of things he's done. Oh, you they know They work. Everything works like <laughs> exceptional, <laughs> but he ha- he's literally done everything himself and it's just like the wackiest stuff, but he's yep. also extremely handy. Okay. Um, so we would always just play in his garage and like watch him do things and he was always fixing stuff and building things for neighbors and none of it was probably to code, but it worked and it, it's certainly sparked my love of carpentry and like creating. Oh, that's seeing him. awesome. Yeah. I, uh, my grandfather was a bit of a handyman himself too. He was bad though. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like my grandmother's house right now. Um, he took out the floor joist for some reason and now, oh, no. and now, now it sinks at the bottom. Nanny's and going like, on the slide. You can, <laughs> you can spill water on the floor and watch it like run to the back <laughs> and he did his own electrical and sometimes it like shoots in and out and you're like yeah and they're like oh well you know turn off the light stomp twice on the floor you know what i mean like <laughs> grandfather paul liked to do things himself and you're like yeah yeah he yeah he did <laughs> that's awesome no my grandfather was actually really good at it but none of it was proper or yeah. like to code but his his brain just works in like this weird inventive way. Okay. It's pretty so cool. So where did you go for carpentry school? Or did you do carpentry school? Yeah, I went to NSAC for the carpentry program. Yeah. And I actually found out two weeks in that I was pregnant with my second daughter. Oh, fun. Yeah. So I decided, okay, well, I can stop everybody everybody around me told me, Well, you're only two weeks in, like get your refund back, have your baby wait till she goes to school because she'll have two under two and you know, everything will be fine. You'll be able to refocus then. And I was so determined. I was like, no, heck no. I am powering through this. I graduated two weeks, two days before I graduated, I gave birth to her. So I wasn't able to attend the graduation and I had to do my exam online because I had a baby. Yeah. (laughs) My instructor was like, part of the exam was framing up a shed and I was nine months pregnant. And he's like, I've had many women in my class, but nobody (laughs) pregnant. Like you're you're killing it. (laughs) But she just went to school last year. Everything I've learned and accomplished through business, carpentry, furniture, flipping. I can't imagine if I had just started, you know, today, last year when she was in primary and yeah. now I'm like, I'd be in year two of carpenter school and started oh, from the beginning. Yeah. I'm like, I'm so happy. I don't remember half of it because it was so tired. Yeah, of with course. Two under two in school <laughs> and working. But at the same time, I'm so glad I just pushed through it and got it done. That's, that's incredible. The it's, amount of people that like, I know that would, that would, that would have taken the, Unfortunately, it is a hard word to say, but the easier way of just saying, listen, yeah. focus on family. There's nothing wrong with focusing on family, but nope, to, be able, to, to be able to overcome those odds and come out with, you know, you got your degree and then you went into carpentry. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of it is too is like having like the entrepreneurial spirit. Yep. I fully believe some people have it and some people don't. Like some people are born to be entrepreneurs. Other people are not. Both are fine. Yeah, of course. But I am 100% an entrepreneur. So I think that like power to push through obstacles you need to have as an entrepreneur. So being pregnant in carpentry school was just another one of those obstacles. Yeah. So you finished, you finished school. You just I had, you school. just had a new second daughter. You got two under two. Yeah. Oh, and where did you go busy. from here? <laughs> so I started, um, I was working with a renovations company. Shout out to Monk Renovations. They're phenomenal because. I know Monk. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah my, awesome. I know Mike Sens. Oh, no. Mike Sens, I played soccer with his son and Mike Sens like managed like three of my soccer teams. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Like they're a great crew. Um, and Dan, the owner actually allowed me to work three days a week after, cause he was like, no, like I did the work term with him. He was like, you just let me know when you can work. And that is so hard (laughs) being a female, being a mother in trades. Like you already have such a like stigma, stigma of like, you know, (laughs) bitching out or like need to go home because your kid's sick or like, yeah. you know, like the, it's just, you already have this like crappy stereotype on you anyway yep. that like, but as a woman and a mother, you do have more of the responsibility just naturally to be home with the kids. So like, it is so tricky to find that balance. So finding a company who was like, yo, I know you need to do the mom thing. I know you have to like be home for suppers, get them a daycare at three 30. Like that's fine. You let me know your schedule and we'll work around it. It was the biggest blessing because had I been on a crew that was like, no, if you can't be here eight to six, you're not here. 
Like I was able to learn, but I was still able to balance yeah, being work a mom. Life. Yeah, work life balance. And so I worked with them for just under a year. And I started, uh, in the meantime, when the kids were napping, I started painting signs and building like small pieces of furniture, terrible, yep. terrible pieces of furniture. <laughs> People bought them. I'd put them online for like super cheap. And I would build for my mom. I would build cabinets that were probably so out of square, so terrible, but they just loved everything I built. They saw how, you know, it, it totally set me on fire. And then it just sort of like spiraled into, I was getting better. I was trying new techniques. And then when I was like, off mat leave I guess you would say and I told Dan like I so appreciate the opportunity I absolutely love that you accommodated me accommodated me and my family um but I'm gonna try my business and I started DC Woodworks and I hadn't looked back since Dan was awesome he's like let me know if you want to come back you always have a job here like I'll totally take you on we love you but good luck uh and then yeah my furniture just sort of set off Wow. And the last three QE2 homes is probably, I think, my biggest um, accomplishment for furniture was I furnished the last three with uh, 15 to 25 pieces in each. QE2 homes. Yeah. The beds, the kitchen tables. I built all of it. No way. Yeah. That's a huge accomplishment. (laughs) Yeah. It was pretty cool. Those homes are, you know, for the audience that doesn't know, the QE2 home is a lottery that happens twice a year. Uh, the QE2 is a hospital, major, Hel- major hospital in Halifax, and they do a, you know, you can buy a ticket to win the show home. Yeah. And these are an event. Like, oh, like, it's like black tie event, e- wine and cheese. Like, yeah. Like we, AKA not me. Like, <laughs> Anya, whenever the QE2 home comes on, we have to go see it. Oh, yeah. And like, there's usually a crowd of people. Yeah. It, yeah. You're like lined up yeah. to get in. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that was pretty cool. And that really took off my business. The first one I did. <clears throat> Um, everybody wanted, you know, duplicates of the coffee table, of the furniture, yes. the end tables. So like I was pumping out orders like crazy. What was your first one? <clears throat> what year? 2017, maybe. Here's something really funny. The background of my laptop is that home. It's oh our, my God, it is. It's our dream home. That's amazing. It's literally, it is, it is the reason why we get up. It's the reason, it's literally the house we want to buy that's in like awesome. five to 10 years. That's yeah. so cool. Which is why I asked what year it is that's because that's so what cool. that, that home on Were that the spring lake. or fall? Uh, spring. Okay. I, mine was the fall. So I don't, I don't um, it might have been, I don't know. I have to ask you. We'll have to go through photos. We can go for the photos, but I Dig have deep it. in my gram <laughs> and they're all there. <laughs> okay. I will. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it was pretty cool because I thought, okay, this is it. Like, I made it. I <laughs> like, yeah, I'm really good at this furniture thing. But I have always the reason I took carpentry when you backtrack was to know how to renovate and do my own home. I yes. didn't necessarily know that I wanted to flip homes as a career, but I just knew that I wanted the skill to be able to invest in mine, sort of like maybe every couple of years get another one, reinvest. I just knew there was so much profit and money in the yeah. real estate agent, real estate, um, investing, investing that yeah. I wanted a piece of it. So that's originally, I guess why I went to school for carpentry. I never wanted to be, you know, a framer or a roofer yeah. or even a home builder. Um, I just knew that I wanted the skill to start. Okay. So you, the, you do the furniture business, it takes off, you get in the QE2 show homes, and then you decide to switch careers again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like as an entrepreneur, again, it's, I'm going to take it back to that, is that we're always, like, you never settle. You're like, okay, I made it. I made my number one goal. Like, how do I get uncomfortable again? Because you don't grow in comfort zones, yep. as you've heard a million times. But, like, when you get, when you reach that level, you're, like, I'm not happy staying there. Agreed. Like, I reach that level but I'm not going to do it for the next 40 years. Like what's next? What's the biggest challenge that I'm going to, you know, crap my pants and think I made the worst decision ever. It's probably a good decision. (laughs) You just, you just go for it. Like, yes. Yeah. So I decided when, like I said, when all the wood stores were shutting down and I wasn't able, like no one cared about, you know, feature walls in their home anymore because everybody's affected by COVID. So I was like, okay, I'm coming up on the refinance. I'm going to make a move and I'm going to pull my equity, use it as a down payment, and just cross my fingers really, really hard and hope it works. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So this was, this is like April, 2020. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is, we're going to get into like the needy. Yeah. So stuff. we're like getting into my first, I guess, year of flipping. Your first year ever coming up. Yeah. Okay. So that first property, mm-hmm. what made you think it was a good flip? How did you identify it? Um, 
that's tricky because I feel like the market was slowly starting to become what it is right now, which is yeah, crazy, crazy really sellers. Crazy. <laughs> but when I was looking, I wanted something because everything was sort of staying on the market for a couple of weeks at that point. So I wanted something a bit older, yep. something I knew I'd possibly have wiggle room on. Yeah, had it been sitting for a little while, and just something that was I. For this one, I tried to get something that was just extremely ugly, but had really good bones because I didn't want to get into any structural issues, foundations, different things that like I'm going to have to dump a boatload of money that I don't have into and then fall flat on my face. I just wanted to make something pretty, flip it, feel a bit more comfortable and then go from there. Eventually, I'd like these, you know, run down houses that... The roof has to be completely taken off and rebuilt and, and pieces put on, but but not for your first one. I was going to say, don't take on. No. I, that's my rule for investors. I always say like, listen, it's okay to renovate a kitchen, but we don't talk. If it has water foundation, we don't touch. Yeah. It's no, you're 100%. not, you're not equipped yet. No, exactly. <laughs> like maybe at house number 10, I feel like I'll be comfortable enough with a cushion enough to take on something yep. that's way crappier. But for now I'm trying to stay like, very aesthetic. What was your budget going into the first house? Like how much capital did you have to be able to actually gut it and flip it? I had 40, no, 56 or 57 almost 60 grand that i could pull from my home okay and i needed 42 for the down payment oh okay um so because it's 20 percent for your yeah, first one if you don't live in it yep. yeah i had a little bit of money saved um but not much so i had about 20 20 grand going into you had 20 grand total to total. flip a house, to flip a house. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah that's including living how much did you pay for it 230 Okay, 20% down. Mm-hmm. So um, math is bad. It was like 42 or something say. or 43 with the lawyer fees and yeah. everything sort of jumbled into. Okay, one. so you're in for, you know, your equity stake is, let's say, 43000 You're down to $187,000 owed on the mortgage. Yeah. How long did you carry it for? Five months. Five months. My okay. mortgage worker was phenomenal, though, because he was able to split it into, I, I don't know how. Yeah. Split it into... 80% being a line of credit. Oh, I love it. only have to pay interest on. Yes. You don't have to make the full payment. Yeah. So I was like, to have this second home, my home had been refinanced. So my $1,200 payment went down to about nine. Yeah. And this new home with the mortgage and the line of credit was under five. So like, I really was not paying much more. You were fine. Yeah. I was like, this is crazy. Like get a good mortgage broker yes <laughs> Igor <yeah>. is the bomb <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Igor <laughs> really though <laughs> okay so you get into this house you take possession what what's your first thing that you try and tackle in that home uh not even the home partnership I okay. have already grown my Instagram quite a bit and I've I've worked with several companies on like a smaller scale yep and I know this is not for everybody <laughs> If you're not, you don't have an online presence, you, you should, because yes. there's so many companies out there wanting to showcase their work and it's way more time and money effective. I don't know how, how you say that to partner, a partner with say 50 small influencers compared yep. to one TV commercial. Like yep. you get such a bigger reach, a better reach, more authentic reach. People know me and my story. They've been watching it. So like partnering with me versus throwing a TV ad on commercial, you might not reach as many people, but you're going to reach like true authentic people who care about what I have to say. Yes. So I was like, okay, I'm reaching out to everyone. I must have sent, I'd say a 200 emails. And you, and so that's how you, and that's how you got with Kent. That's how I got with Kent, um, with DeWalt, with Blanco Sinks and a few more. Okay. But like out of the 200 emails, I probably got like 189 that said absolutely not. (laughs) Yeah. But that's. When you go, when you talk about the entrepreneurial spirit, that is it. Yeah. You eat dog shit until you get a hit. 100%. And then, <clears> so <throat> this second flip, I know we're going a bit forward. Yep. Say I reach out to the 200 emails. Yep. Well, I maybe got about 175 no's and I yes. got a couple extra yeses that had seen what I have done. Yep. And we're like, okay, maybe we'll give her a shot. Now you have credible. Now you have credibility. Yeah. So I'm, I just know that I'm just constantly, when people are like, well, we don't really partner with an influencer of your size at yeah. 17,000 compared to, you yep. know, 130,000, like I'm a micro influencer, but these people were like, okay, well clearly she's adamant. Yep. She's grown and she's like, hi, now will you give me a chance? <laughs> a lot of them still said, no, like good luck on growing. Like we'll, we'll chat soon. So 
house number three, you better believe I'm going to be like, hi guys, me again. Yeah. <laughs> and you're ready now. <laughs> and they're going to be like, oh, she's not going away. She's not <laughs> shutting up. Okay, fine. I'll give her a partnership. <laughs> okay. So you get the house, the first house, and yeah. then you start looking for partnerships. Yes. What were you looking for in these <clears throat> partnerships? I was looking for, uh, basically I hate using the word free product, but I was looking for a product to be, uh, given to me for advertising, posting, yep. talking about it. Like I do a lot of DIY content on how to plumb in your sink, how to lay your floor, how to do all these things that I'm doing. So the, my end goal would be YouTube is my biggest paycheck, but for now I have to create that content and sort of get it out there. Yes. So anybody who wants to give me a anything. sink or a floor or anything that's going to save money on my cost, yep. I'll create a video for them and do it. Okay. So, uh, as far as your content on YouTube goes, I really enjoyed your mom's bathroom flip. Oh, thanks. That was great. <laughs> that was cool. Hey, <laughs> uh, uh, that's a good video. I do recommend that one. Um, that's, so you get partners to be able to help co collaborate. Yep. So like you get them free publicity through your audience that you've already generated through your furniture business. I assume that's how you yes. got to 70,000. How many followers are you at before you started partnering? Before partnering, like uh, at that first house, what were you at or roughly around 11,000? Holy. Yeah. You're uh, you're up to like 18, 19 last time I checked. Yes. Because you've grown by almost 8,000 people. Yeah. I just literally have to be annoying online. I'm always online. Yes. Always. But it's <laughs> it works. Like, it, yeah. I'm telling you, like, it works. I, I do believe great content works, though. And I know you have yes. great content because I've watched your content. Totally. Great content's a big determining factor of that. Yeah. And I feel like, too, like, I didn't always have good content. When you scroll back, like... I didn't have sort of the direction I'm at right now where I know exactly what I'm posting. I know who my audience is. I know what they yep. relate to, what they want to see. I feel like in the beginning, you just sort of have to like throw everything out there and see what sticks. Yep. Do people like this part? Do people like when I'm in the photos? Do people like when I'm talking about, you know, the hardships and like it wasn't easy getting here, all of these things, or do they like the pretty aesthetic? Yep. That sort of thing. So so throwing every piece of content you have out there before worrying about if it's perfect, then you can figure out exactly if it's perfect and what what makes it your perfect. Right. Now, back to the flip, because yeah. I, I, I got to say, I, <laughs> Sorry, I, go I, everywhere. Could, I could talk about content creation all day. <clears throat> the podcast has really got me into that market and yeah. I'm really loving it. But like we're flipping. <laughs> yeah, true. True. No. <laughs> so um, when you had partner CS, Kent DeWalt, what did they provide to you? Like how much did you how much? material did you get for the house i probably got i'm not sure if i'm allowed to say it <laughs> uh probably about fifteen thousand dollars in product oh yeah okay so 20 you have a twenty thousand dollar budget yeah and then you get fifteen thousand dollars worth of product to flip this home yes and now in saying this these are top of the line products they all want to yes advertise yep. you know like the six hundred dollar sink and the five dollar square foot floor yep the house was still flippable had I have not been on Instagram or YouTube and just was very smart with what I bought yeah, and thrifting and, you know, going to Habitat for Humanity, going on Facebook Marketplace and all those garage yep. sales. It was definitely still flippable. Yeah. Just now it, 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 on the other end, it, it was so much better. Yes. Because it had the high quality. You got to products. do higher end finishes, which only yeah. helped your <clears throat> resale value when you did come to market. Yeah. Okay, so when you finally started taking, did you take back walls? Did you I took out, yeah, I took out two walls. So it's a, Bit, very basic split entry. Yep. Very common 45 year old home here. So I took out the walls that connected the dining room, living room and kitchen before yeah. it was three separate small walkthroughs. And now it was just like one large open space with a, with an Island with an Island now. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> you have, if you're going to open up those, I know that when homes are talking about split entry, you walk up, there's your living room, kitchen's behind a little wall with the doorway, the yep. dining room, the dining room's to the left of the kitchen. And there's usually a walk out to the backyard. Yes. Yeah. Exactly it's that, that house. <laughs> Take out those two walls, add a kitchen and it completely dynamically changed oh, the space. It's unreal. When you have those walls out, you're like, this is actually a really great house. Yeah. Before it was so choppy and so small. Yep. 40 years ago, they just made 75 rooms in a house. And it's like, it doesn't make any sense. There's doors everywhere. People didn't like entertaining, I guess. No. <laughs> Don't talk to me. I'm going in the seventh bedroom. <laughs> so how long was the renovation process for you to get that thing from what when possession wise to market ready? I was 16 weeks, um, but I am also a savage when it comes to work. So I was working... When my kids went to their dads on Saturdays and Sundays, I was working 30 hours in a weekend okay. for 16 weeks. Savagely. I love uh, it. Savage. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I would also argue that in flipping and, and like this is 
this is something that everyone has to take into account when you're flipping is the holding cost. Yeah. Because every time you are in there doing something, every delay that you have is another dollar you're spending that you don't need to spend. Yes. Which is why you need to be in there, as you say, like a savage. Yeah. Because the job has to get done. Because if you get a delay by a week, that's a quarter more mortgage you're paying. 100%. If you get a delay for anything whatsoever, when you flip, it's all about time sensitivity. You got... It was great for you because the market took a ridiculous turn. Yeah. Yeah. We were like, okay, we'll list it safely at 289 and I'll have a great profit. Two weeks later. Okay. It's three. It's 299. Four weeks later. No, no, no. It's 315. Like the market was just taking the biggest nosedive for equity, for sorry, revenue and things that were on there that it just kept bumping up the price, which was great. Great on this end. Not so great when I had to define number two. Yeah, of course. But also I think my biggest thing too would be if you're going to start a flip, start it in the springtime because you don't have a heating cost. You don't have oil. Oh, like I didn't realize how much that saved me. Yeah. Versus now when I walk away, if I don't go to the rental for three days because I'm creating content or, or having meetings or on people's podcasts, yep. <laughs> then I have the house has to still be heated. Yes. And like if, there's damage in the basement and the drywall has to come out and the insulation has to come out. You're heating a house that's literally just going outside. Yep. But you have to heat it because of the pipes. Holding costs. So it's a huge holding cost to get your first rental or your first property in the spring. That's in- okay. Yeah. See, not a lot of people think of that. <laughs> no, I um, definitely did now that I have one I have to heat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn it. <laughs> How, what was the hardest thing about flipping the first house? Like what was like? I think my unrealistic expectation of the actual work. Okay behind it so you think okay i thought i have this home i can demo in a week i can then do floors in a week i can then paint and do lights in another week and trim oh you're doing you're doing a lot in a week right and i i thought to myself okay and i was even like good about it i was give myself two weeks but demo everything spirals into a couple more days every single time because just life happens kids have to come home from school things just happen all the time. And I found I was really unrealistic with my timeline. So in turn, I felt pressure, pressure. And I kind of felt at the end, like I had failed because I didn't meet it in the 10 weeks I gave, gave myself. I, it was like 16 or 17. Yeah. Um, so three and a two and a half months to four to five. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Which is not bad. Like people are like, Hey, I bought my house a year ago. I still didn't paint it. And you flipped a whole house, but yeah, but I had that unrealistic expectation. So this time around, I'm like, there's no timeline. I'm not. Okay. Because you're still learning that process. Yeah. You're still figuring out your own systems to put in place to how to get something done. Yeah. A to B as quickly as possible. And you just think like, even as much as like spending an entire day, you know, putting all of new plates on your house, like that's hours of work. You don't take into consideration even like the hours of caulking all the baseboards and all everything is I just didn't have a uh, like a real expectation especially when you're doing something to a high level that yeah. takes a lot <clears throat> of patience it takes a lot of um uh focus yeah do you have to make sure that and like when you're doing carpentry when you're building a space it's measure three measure three times cut once because that has to be sure because as you just said you got fifteen thousand dollars worth of free material twenty thousand dollars in the bank you could not waste material no there was no room there's no room at all to make a bad cut (laughs) yeah and so i was just like i have to i have to be very focused and also like i could have just thrown regular carpet in it and still would have sold I could have updated it a little bit. It's still a soul, but I, like you said, I wanted it to be like a yes. showstopper. Yeah. Every room has a feature wall. Every room has like a cool design. And like, that's not always the case. If you're not, if you don't want to be on Instagram, you don't want to create content. You just want to flip homes. You don't have to have feature walls in every room. No. You just have a, a clean, dry, safe room. Yep. But I knew my end goal is content YouTube creating. Yep. So I have to make it. Yes. Watchable. Yeah. And you, and you also, if you're partnering, if your goal is partner with bigger brands. Yeah. It's that you have to be able to give them this product at the end of it. That's like, ta-da, look how amazing this is. Right. They need to see the value in it. So that they give you yeah. more stuff in the future and they're willing to give you more. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're built and that's really cool that you managed to think of it that way, because then you create different revenue streams for yourself. Yes. Different. Because the one thing I find in real estate that is the biggest hurdle for a lot of people is understanding that 
there are more than one options for revenue stream available. Oh. And the fact that like the flip, let's we'll get into how much you made later. Mm-hmm. But like if the flip wasn't as high as you thought it was going to be, you've created these other revenue streams to make sure that you've offset whatever loss you took on that one. Yes. Like my end goal would be my homes that I flip is just the the set. Yeah. Like I want it all to be like my biggest thing to be YouTube, Instagram, creating this content and then selling the home at the end of it is great. Like yeah. my flips, I feel like are slowly going to start to take longer and longer to do because I'm going to hopefully have more partnerships and more videos to create and more things to do, which in turn, like you said, has created different revenue streams, which yes. is huge. Yeah, of course. The average millionaire has seven to 11. So, right. I got about three, so I got a little <laughs> ways to go, but I'm going to be there. <laughs> but you're getting there. <laughs> yeah. But you're getting the point is the, the best thing you can do is start building those streams. Now, yeah. as you grow through this business and this industry, you'll start p- creating those pathways for yourself. For sure. Now, how much, what was your biggest, like, I'm trying to, like, did you open up a wall and find a big hole, like, mole? Was there water damage? Was there anything in there that um, was, like, a really big, scary moment? Yeah, when my dad bust through a pipe. <laughs> See now, So it wasn't the house. <laughs> it was from my dad. <laughs> See, now, when we talk about flipping and demoing and renovations, that's the stuff everyone's scared of. Yeah. If I went to, like, crack open a wall and there's mold or, like, wow. Yeah, and there was a, a lot of mold in this basement. Was there asbestos? Thank God. Yeah, because the home. Yeah, no, thank goodness. Um, but my dad was left to do demo on a night that I was the one time. Like I said, I'm a savage when it comes to work. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna go out with my girlfriends. And oh my! It's her 32nd birthday. We're gonna go out. I'm gonna walk away from the flip, and then 20 minutes later, I get a call. Nick, you have to come here. You have to come over. The pipe is like, well, how do I do this? Keep in mind, my dad can't hang a pitcher, so telling him to shut the water off is not a thing. No. So, yeah, that <laughs> happened, and that had to all be cleaned up. Thank goodness the subfloor wasn't down yet, but but that was definitely, like, a big panic. Yeah, of course. And then when I opened up the back door, I took the deck off, and the entire back side of the house was rotted. And oh. I, I, like, boo-hoo cried. So I was like, this is not supposed to happen. It's supposed to be just aesthetics. I've never dealt with rot like yep. this ever. Um, so that was a big learning curve as well. Yeah. But okay. I'm kind of glad it happened cause I learned how to fix it. Now you know. Now I know. I know that most of the homes that have attached decks yep. built back then are going to have rot. It's like inevitable. Yeah. So I mean, just well, to be prepared for Where it. does the water go? Right. Exactly. When you have an attached deck, keep in mind like when they bolt the deck into the exterior part, the exterior wall. Yeah. That it's incredible what water can get into. Oh, everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Water will find a way. And with our winters, because we have so much f- freezing and thawing, it'll freeze. The water inside that little nut will freeze, expand, freeze, expand. Yeah. And then you're just going to create a bigger hole and it's just, you're always going to have water. Yeah. 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 So I just, it's something that I'm now prepared. This house that I have, it, the back is actually only a foot off the ground. So the deck is unattached yes so happy (laughs) i was like this is amazing i don't have to touch it especially in the winter time so i've now noted to self winter time flips i'm gonna try and get the ones that don't have much to do exterior yeah because i don't want to be building a deck in february well who wants to be shoveling (laughs) right exactly (laughs) thank god we have this sort of weather we do now like this weekend i'm gonna build the front step on this one but that's the extent of it Typically, we have two feet of snow by now. Right. Okay. So going back, we're going to go back to that first look because we're not done. Always bring me back because yeah, yeah. I'll keep going. It's just when we when we're done the story, then we can travel and do everything else. Okay. Because you get through those four months. How much of your budget did you have left? How much were you living off of? At the four months. Yeah, with the four months, you're getting ready to list. What was left? Um, absolutely nothing. And nothing. I, nothing. My visa was maxed. My Mastercard was maxed. My student line of credit was maxed, and I actually had to borrow two thousand dollars from my dad. Okay, you were you were all in. <laughs> all in. But I knew obviously this house is going to sell. I could have sold it earlier. Yeah. Was I not partnered with people because I could have sold it, you know, without a feature wall in every room and yep. without the beautiful lights and different things wouldn't have got the price, but I wouldn't have also had to borrow money from my dad. So it was like, which way do I want to go? I want, I'm, I'm thankful that he's there that I can say, Hey dad, I'm broke AF and I need, I need two grand, two grand until yeah. we look close at the it. Work, look at the work I've done. Yeah. Please so help I knew, me. I knew that was thankful that I had him. A lot of people don't have that. So just to be very prepared. And if you're trying to maybe go the content way of flipping, maybe do your first one without doing that or flip it and get it out of here. So you kind of have like 
a bit more understanding of how it's going or, or you already have the cash in the bank from the last one. Um, one thing I would yeah. say for the content side of the flip is just take before and after photos. Yeah. And take it before walk during the day you take the day pick and session. story what you're doing that day. Yeah. But like maybe not. I went hard with the partners. But you had like, to. You set yourself up for that. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Exactly. You, you create not like it's crazy because at like at the same time you're trying to get into flipping and create that business model for yourself. You're also trying to create a partnership business model for yourself. Yes. So you're servicing two businesses over four months at the same time with you know the amount of money you had and you have nothing coming in because oh, I was a homeschool teacher at that time too because the kids are home from COVID. Oh <laughs> like, yes. Just gonna go jump off the. Bridge. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> but I also am a person who cannot sit down. Like I. It helps to have ADHD. Right. 100%. <laughs> it totally does. Because on Sundays, and it's like, let's lay in bed and watch a movie. I'm like at 7.30, my mind, I'm awake. My head is like zing, 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 zing. Like all the things I have to, like I want to do, what I have to do, like goals, aspirations, dreams. Like there's no sitting down and putting my feet up. So like always having a million things to do, I think really helps this helps me helps yeah, yeah for sure so you're getting so finally the house is ready you've gone through the rotting wood you've opened up the walls the the floor is laid when you were actually i'm gonna bring back before we go into this did you bring in subcontractors did you have people come in and do other parts of the i work? did everything myself except the plumbing and electrical you did everything everything Wow. Yeah, even the drywall. And then eventually at the end, I realized I need a drywaller to come in and do the bigger spots because I'm terrible at it. Did you do the mudding? All of it. Oh, I'm and sorry. And then he came and did like the skim over. And now going forward, I will never touch drywall again. It's yeah. like the one thing I was like, I'm going to, it's a cost I can save three grand on yep. because I clearly don't have it. And I can do it myself to the best of my abilities, learn, and then next time know that that's something I want to contract out, but currently I don't have the money to. Yep. So just being extremely cautious, like even if you don't like the job, you damn well have to do it because yes. you don't have the money to not do it. <laughs> Listen, I've mudded before. I mudded for the, remember how I told you we were doing the renovations yep. last year? I had to do the mudding. And I, I don't know why they made me mud. Like, I don't know <laughs> why. I can't pick up a hammer. It. People think it's like an easy job. I think they thought it was funny. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's not an easy job. It's just gonna be really funny to watch them try and do it. It was really bad. They had to come back and redo it. Stucco. And never without the intent of stucco. Yeah. Never, never, ever again. Right. Okay. So you've done everything yourself. Kudos. You are a savage. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> I um, am. Your game rate a list. When when did you hit the market to sell? Uh, September twenty second or twenty first, I think. What. Well, you bought it at 230, 230, right? 230. What did you list at? 320. Almost. Almost wow. 100 over. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then we had seven offers. Okay. But did you use a realtor? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because I know you work with Andrew Stevens, so yeah. I assume Andrew Stevens sold it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you had real estate fees to take out. Yeah. So you, you <clears> sold at 320. You had seven offers. And how many days? Three days. And then we got 335. You got 335. Yep. So you got a... Hundred and five thousand dollars over asking for a four month flip. Yep. At did you use and you use everything. So you had thirty five thousand dollars all in. Oh, all in plus like I said, borrowing from my dad, maxing yep. my visa. Yep. Like so many little things that you don't realize come in like if you think your budget's gonna be twenty, double it. Yeah, like, of course. Always. <laughs> Everything's just extra. Okay. Everything. So you're in total two sixty five if you count the whole mortgage you paid out, but you didn't pay it all mm -hmm. out. So you're probably paid about, you know, like maybe after holding it for four months, probably 180 plus 35,000. So you're probably at like, let's say 215 mm -hmm. and then you sell for 235. What? 335. 335. Sorry. 335. Yeah. My bad. What? How much did you get? How much did you walk away with after all your expenses? Uh, I think it was about 82,000. You walked with eighty two thousand dollars. Maybe was it? Oh God, this is terrible. I should know this. So my, th I got one thirty five back. Yes, because I got the down payment back. Okay. So, but then I paid everything. Yeah, it was about eighty eighty five in between seventy or eighty thousand. Okay. So, and then you did you pay everything? Was that net or gross? Then you have to pay everything out. That was gross. Okay. So, at, what was what did you walk away with net? I think about fifty. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's a huge excited. flip. Yeah, huge. And I think even, like I said, without the partnerships, without all the high-end finishes, I probably could have easily walked away with about 30, yeah. which is still a very successful first-time flip. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So you walk, so what came out? What were your actual expenses that had come out after your cut of, let's just say, 75000 
What had to actually come out? Um, do you mean like flooring and stuff? Like I mean, like I mean, like because you you grossed eighty, mm-hmm. like okay, and then you walked away with fifty. So like, how did the capital? How much capital gains did you pay? Because when you oh, sell I'm a house, pay eight. Ooh, I think it's like eighty seven hundred for capital gains. That's not terrible. It's not because so everybody had warned me. Okay, don't don't flip because you're gonna have capital gains. First of all, I have no issue paying taxes. If I have to pay a hundred grand in taxes, it's because I'm making a million dollars. Yes. So I'm fine. It sucks, <laughs> but I'm making a million dollars or however the math will add up to be. Yeah. But people who are like, Oh, you have to pay so much taxes. Yeah. Because you're making so much more money. So to me, it's like a no brainer. Yeah. I'll pay it, but I'm banking on the other side. Yeah. yeah. It's never going to be fun to sign over a check, but it means you're making money. Yes. So capital gains is, your profit, so the hundred yep. divided in half, so your only capital gains is fifty, and you're taxed on half of that fifty. Oh, that's way better. Yeah, people are like, "Oh, you're going to be taxed on a hundred grand." No, you're not. I oh, got, that's way better. I got better. taxed on twenty six thousand or something. Yeah. So and and it's a it's a it's a high end, and it also goes on your income. Okay. So my DC Woodworks was only making, I think, 50 grand a year. Yep. So I'm in a smaller tax bracket anyway. Yep. So if you already bank in and making, you know, 130 a year, your capital gain is going to be higher yep. because you're in a higher tax bracket already. Yes. But I had to pay about eight grand. So wow. It's not bad. That's laughable. Yeah. And people are like, oh, that sucks. I'm like, no, but I made a hundred. So. Yeah. If I every time I make a hundred thousand, I have to pay eight. I'm fine with it. Yeah, that's a that's a great return. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then like paying the plumbers, paying everybody, paying all, paying my dad back, um, paying the interest on my visa to walk away with about forty five, fifty thousand. I was totally fine with. I imagine you were totally fine. And with then that. I dumped it back into the second house, and now I'm broke again. But I it's was fine. Gu- I was gonna say <laughs> that was where we're going next. Yeah. Now this whole now you you talked about your content on YouTube. Yeah. This whole story, start to finish, you document everything on YouTube. All of it. So everything we're talking about right now for this first flip. Yep. You, our viewers can go. Our listeners in can, two weeks. In two weeks, episode one is dropping. Oh sh. Yeah. And no there are way. twenty minute episodes, so okay. it's like watching a TV show. No yeah. way. So it'll be start to finish. It'll talk about all my budgets. It'll talk about um, all the things that went into it, all the problems. You'll see all the root, the rot on the back of the house. You'll see everything. Oh, wow. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. How long to create that content? How long did that take? So originally I thought, okay, I'm decent at filming and doing my own YouTube videos, but I like, I'm going to toy around with the idea of hiring a videographer. Yep. Found a great one and it was it's about 8 grand per flip. 8 okay. episodes, 1000 bucks, it's pretty standard. Wow. Um yeah, and so it's an investment, but I, I know it's something it'll return in I'm the long run. I'm not saying wow on how much 8 grand is. I actually believe that that's a great deal. Really? For the content you're yeah. getting. Oh, 100%. Now that I look, I'm like, Mark, like don't don't charge me anymore. But like, if anyone else wants you to do this, you're worth so yeah, much yeah. more than this. Yeah. But it's also his largest production that he's ever done too. So he's, he's figuring out kind of like learning the process along the way and, and his name's all over it. So when people see it and find it, they'll see and find him. Also. Exactly. And that's so it's sort what, of like a win win. That's collaboration. At yeah. Best. Yeah. I, I now, now, cause like I've spent enough money on content now in yeah. the last like four months of the podcast that I'm like, yeah, I'd pay that. Yeah, I'd pay right. that. I'd like, pay that in a heartbeat. People are like, I've often have, you know, like the, the negative viewing people who are like, oh, like must be nice to be on YouTube or like blah, blah, blah. It is so, I make maybe 600 bucks a month on YouTube and you times that by 12 and minus the like 20 grand in videography fees <laughs> that I'm going to have this year. Like I'm not actually going to benefit from YouTube until probably four more years down the road. Until you're but established. It's an investment. Yep. Yeah. I was like, yep. I am in work, I am investing in having him do this properly. Yeah. And document it properly and have all of these things, you know, a hundred and ten percent really cool to watch. So that way in five years I get I can reap all the benefits, the benefits of, of yeah. my hard work. As well as cause like it's really cool that you're building two businesses simultaneously. Yeah. Because they're only gonna go hand in hand. Exactly. So you take the fifty grand. And you run right to the next one. I literally like don't even feel like I was able to have a shower before I <laughs> went to the next one. And I was again, savage. I'm sending my agent like a million listings. I'm like, what about this? What about this? What about this? He's like, can you breathe? <laughs> but I, oh, I was like, okay, well I can live off this 50 grand that I have. And my like tiny little bit of YouTube money that comes in. 
or I can shove it into another house. Reinvest. And reinvest and keep going because yes. I'm going to take a break. But for what? Like, yeah. I'm thir- I just turned 30. I don't need to. I don't need, I guess and I you rest. Cl- and you, clearly hand, you can clearly handle two kids and operate. You can clearly, <laughs> you're fine. Right? There's, when they're not there and I'm not stressed out that I have a hundred things to do, that's when I'm like off my and you game. And you can teach COVID, you can teach <laughs> during COVID. Like French clearly, immersion at that. <laughs> so clearly you can handle whatever life throws at you and still make a 50 grand off a of flip. Yeah. So you're fine. You so, can, uh, you yeah, can work. I was like, you know what? I have to, I have to do the next one because at I least just tell don't want to sit around. At least tell me you had a drink. Oh, <laughs> Believe you me, I had a drink. <laughs> there was a celebration. There was a big celebration. Oh yeah, a big one. I was quite happy. Okay, <laughs> so I'm, I'm really interested in this aspect. You you get the fifty grand. This is when did you close on the, the first one? October, about four weeks later. So I think around the twentieth of October. When did you get paid? That day. That, that day. Okay, yeah. fifty grand in the bank account, October twentieth. October 20th for 2020 was a wild real estate market. Mm -hmm. We were at like the apex of like whatever this this nonsense was happening. I remember October being like, can it please be December? Yeah. Can I please just just like breathe? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was wild. And so you're shopping in October. Yeah. Because shopping in March for that first home was different than shopping in. Oh my God, there's way more to choose from. Yeah, the inventory. Even just more to see, to yes. compare. The inventory went, we lost like, I, I know, and I, I've quoted this stat on a few other episodes already in the podcast, but I know in May 2020, we were at 1,300, 1,400 homes on market. And that's condos included in all of HRM. Yeah. By December, by I think October, we were at, I think it was like 900. That's and crazy. And then November was like 750. And as of January 1st, we're down to 600. That's so like to give you an idea wild. and like the inventory you're shooting through. So when you're going shopping, cause yeah. it's really, cause I'm highlighting buyers here. How <laughs> was shopping in, the, in um, November? I still feel like it's not as bad for me because I want the ugliest, grossest house. The things that sit. So if I'm fighting for a house, I'm typically fighting with three people versus 15 people. Yeah. Like I have friends who've been looking for a house and have offered on like 25 homes in the last year. Yep. Overpriced and have still been out by bid by like 20 and 30 grand. Yep. And, yep. but they're looking for move in ready houses, houses that just need a little bit of love. Like maybe you don't like the paint color, change with the floors in a couple of years, but everything's livable. Yep. So this house that I'm into now had mold in the attic. Okay. The roof is basically caving in and there were seven foundation cracks. So I took a bit more of a Oh, you're taking on. Yeah. Like I knew the mold in the attic was, I got it quoted first. It was 1100 bucks by asbestos abatement. Yeah. They just come in and spray. Okay. Lifetime guarantee. Wise cracks was 300 bucks a crack. So it was a couple grand up front. That's not bad. No. And so it was like 1500 bucks in cracks or 1800. Um, but I can then again, give both of these pieces of paper to the new home homeowner and say like, Peace it's of been mind. done properly. Yep. Here you go. And then I have my roof guys for the roof, which I mo- kind of figured most of the homes I'm going to put a metal roof on anyway. Cause it's just like such a it's nice way better. Yeah. It's so pretty. People love it. They just know they're getting a good house. So, but that's not something that every homeowner is willing to do. Plus on top of it being so ugly on the inside. Yeah, I've seen the video. Yeah, I, I, like I wallpaper. I watched the walk and paneling through. everywhere. The wood paneling yeah. on like the entry stairs. Two uh, types of wood paneling. I know with burgundy carpets <laughs> and like four wallpapers in eye view. It's crazy. <laughs> it's like your brain is on drugs. When and this is on. And this is on Poplar, right? Yeah, it's on my street. Yeah, it's I'm on your. Sh- like you live on Poplar. Ten houses up from it. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. I can walk down to it. It's oh, great. good. Okay, because yeah, some of our uh, some of our close friends are on Poplar, and it's really oh, nice. funny. I was watching I was watching the video that you, the the walkthrough you did. Yeah, that you posted recently, and I was like, oh my god, she's on Poplar, and, and you're like shopping, <laughs> like, oh my god, I know where that is. I can go drive by it. I'm yeah. like, yes, you can go. You can <laughs> Tell go. Tell her to dr- come in. <laughs> Tell her to come see it. She can have backstage pass. <laughs> so this is. So when did you close on the new purchase? November 27th. November 27th, you took possession. So it was like 2020. 20. Yeah. What's the timeline? Um, I took three weeks off at Christmas because having it be my second flip, I now have no debt on my cards. I was like, I'm able to take a couple of weeks and chill, chill with my family. I didn't have it in between the houses. So 
I, my goal was to have all of the demo done, which it was before Christmas and then take two to three weeks off, which I did, which were phenomenal. Good. And then now I'm at the, the rebuild stage. And I think from here, I'd say eight to 10 ish weeks. Okay. Um, if it's longer, that means I have more partners who needed more content. So I'm 100% fine with that. But I think end of March will be my End of March, Bullish. just in time for spring, yeah. spring market when that yeah. peak hits. Yeah. So uh, I will come back to this though. She did specifically ask her partner. So if anyone's listening and needs to team up, you know, you can call DC Woodworks yeah. Danica. <laughs> <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> so you're eight to 10 weeks before you, it comes to market again. Yeah. Um, how, what's the budget for this one? Um, it's roughly the same. The numbers are almost identical. I bought this one for 222. Okay. The other one was 230. Yep. I'm hoping to list for about 310 to 325, depending yep. on what happens and what goes into the home and what the market's like. Um, but they're pretty well the same budget, which I found really nice. They're both split entries. This one's just a little bit smaller, but the area is better, meaning like the it was all semis by Taranaki. So I was really pushing the threshold of yep. the neighborhood, whereas Poplar, I'm around other split entries. So it's a bit more balanced. Um so yeah, I feel like the numbers are pretty well the same as last time. What's the budget this time? Uh, or, or is it rough, into, roughly yeah. the same. Roughly the same. Yep. Okay. So Just because I know I'm always, there. it's different. Like last one needed all new floors because it was pink carpet. Yep. This one only needs a little bit of floor, but it's hardwood floor. So it's a bit more expensive. Yep. Um, I'm doing like a DIY lace in flooring. So I know. I, I've seen it. <laughs> I'm really excited. I, I've seen the video and it looks, <laughs> it looks annoying and hard. It's really annoying. <laughs> um, in the video I've, um, like asked me halfway through the project, I would have said, I'll never do it again. Now stepping back and having it done and knowing that there's beautiful oak throughout the whole house, I 100% would do it again. How, how's, I haven't seen the effect. I haven't seen the finished product, but how's the effect when you walk in? It's amazing. Yeah. You can't, yeah, it's, I just feel like hardwood is just always going to be like the king of all floors. Always. It's so good. Hardwood's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so same budget. How much have you gotten of what you got? You said you got more partners for this one. Did yeah. You, did and you so, get more material? Uh, no, I didn't get any more material. They're more outside partners. So one is uh, Aero Barrier, which is like a blown in. They put the house under negative pressure. Okay. And they they blow in this like it's fine. They blow in this like acrylic fog and it uh all of the holes in the house end up being like, accumulated by this fog, but it's a barrier to the wind. So the average house is like 4 to 6 times air changes in an hour. This will bring it down to 1. Huh. So it's like extremely efficient. Yep. and eco-friendly and like utility friendly and your all your bills will be down it's a great thing to pass to my new homeowner but like it's not something that i needed no in the house you wouldn't have done it if it wasn't a partner no exactly so it's a partner who wants to show showcase what they're doing yeah so it allows me to offer the new buyer this like really unique feature that you know the house is super super airtight and they'll they pay me on yep. top of doing that. So wow. it allows me more material or, yep. you know, to pay for my plumber. Yeah. And so it ends up working out really well. Huh? Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing what like having good content can give you Yeah, because people true. want to attach themselves to that name to get their brand out for sure. And I think my number one thing for content is like not to worry about when it's perfect to just get it out there and to be authentically who you are. Because there's been times when I started creating content that I really fell in the let's make everything like white and oatmeal and beautiful and like in my world unachievable. I'm a carpenter and I have two small kids like in my house and my life is just messy. It's yep. just everybody's is. Like, <laughs> so I started to get away from trying to make my content like theirs. Yep. It works for them. It's great for them. But I was like, I need to quit trying to become this look on Instagram that I feel like I should be. And I was just started to be me. And that's when I noticed. I was going to say, that's when you, I think up. that's like when you really figure out your yeah. audience and you figure and people out. Like, we want to know that, you know, your house is messy like ours and we feel normal because your house is messy. I or, wouldn't be surprised if the biggest takeaway from this podcast is you in school. 
Yeah. I really, I really like, I wouldn't be surprised if I had like people call me being like, dude, she did what? <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Cause like the next time someone tells me that they can't do something, I'm just gonna be like, well, actually listen to this episode <laughs> and call in this second. You can do and it. And then you tell me what you can't do. Yeah. It's we'll- <laughs> literally a mindset. I'm like, I can do this. I'm going to be around the same 24 hours, whether I'm pregnant and in school or working or on mat leave. Like I, I can do it. You can, you can, you can do it. it. You can do so, it. Okay. So this, this flip is going to end, you know, potentially in April. Yeah. Uh, hopefully maybe I'll bring you a buyer. We'll see. Yeah. There you <laughs> <go>. <laughs> um, this flip is going to end potentially in April. What, what's, what are your goals and plans for the next like three to five years? Cause in real estate investing, it's all about growth and pushing mm-hmm. that, pushing the envelope to the next level. So what are you looking to do? What are you hoping to accomplish in five years? I'm hoping that at the end of this flip, I can buy something in a zone that I can turn into two units or three units and have rentals. Oh. So I want to do like flip, sell, flip, sell, yep. flip, keep. Okay. So every couple I'll sell a couple to keep my capital gains down or even sell one, rent one, sell one, rent one. Yeah. Um, cause I, again, if anyone asks me my retirement plan, it's always real estate. It's always. Just, I'm just going to sell the 10 properties I have. Yeah. That I hope to have and <laughs> I'll be good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think, uh, basically it would be to get rental properties and accumulate wealth through real yeah. estate. Yeah. Exactly. And create that passive income. Cause you know, you need apparently seven to 11 streams yeah. of income to become a millionaire. <laughs> And YouTube. I really want to grow YouTube. Like I said, I definitely want my houses to be the content, but in reality that YouTube is what pays my bills. The content is just like an extra. Yeah. And so if it takes me, you know, nine months to flip a house because I have 75 videos I'm going to pump out, it's not a problem with those holding fees because the videos are going to be what pays me versus... The, the, the house, house. house itself, which is... The house is a stage. Which is a really <clears throat> important thing to know because it's like when I always find when people talk about housing, I mean, flipping, flipping houses, because it is not, it is probably the, unfortunately, the ugly duckling of in real estate investments. Oh, hundred percent. Not a lot, but a lot of people are like burrs really in fashion right now. Mm-hmm. Um, buy and hold, if you can find the right areas, always, always going to win. Yeah. You know, uh, there's so many other strategies you can use, but I find like, even for me, I always thought flip was like, I was like, in how fast you can't flip. That was my, that was my thing. Cause I was like, yeah. I was like, the numbers don't work. Like there's yeah. no way. Cause I thought capital gains was way more extreme yeah, than it was. Not. So like to see that come to full fruition, it's like, oh, okay, this works. And here's someone who's done it at a really high level and is building a career off of just yeah. straight flipping. Exactly. And it takes a lot, like the cool thing for you and your business right now is usually like whenever I talk to an investor, it's usually about tenants. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that. No. And that's the thing. I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready yet for tenants because I like to sell the house, walk away from it and be done. You weren't ready for that rotted back deck though. No, and wasn't. you figured it's that true. out. <laughs> it's true. So they don't get rotted tenants. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do, you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, <right>? exactly. <laughs> um, and I would, I think for the one that I do keep, I want to get it in like a decent area. So the price can be up. So that way that it's, you know, somebody who takes pride in ownership in renting and ownership yep. and the house won't be destroyed. Um, cause I feel like that's, that would be my biggest thing is if I put my, my soul into these houses, which even when I'm renting, I know they're all going to have feature walls. They're going to be unique. That's just how I do things. I can't just do it standard. You do, you, you put your splash of color on it, Yeah, which is what makes it, um, it makes it more enjoyable for you. Totally. And it's just like such a, more content it's just a better after yep. people love it that much more um so if i was to ever have somebody destroy that i would feel like i would be heartbroken <laughs> they might be destroyed <laughs> <laughs> right yeah <laughs> i got a hammer <laughs> <laughs> danica i have to say like this has been an absolute pleasure thank um, you <laughs> thank you so much for coming on i'm really excited to see the content that you come out with and really excited to see where you go from here. Thank you. I'm it's, really excited. It's been My a YouTube is DC Woodworks. <laughs> when, <laughs> when the second one is done and sold, yeah. come on back and share how it went. That would be awesome. Yeah. By totally. all means. Okay. For sure. Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs> Bye. See ya. If you'd like to get in touch with Danica, you can follow her at DC Woodworks on Instagram and YouTube or email her directly at DC Woodworks 902 at gmail.com. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, you can reach me at 902-220-7357 or jason.paul at kw.com. Thanks again. Bye.